Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel on the college process. Once again, my name is Ed Zamora from Principia Prep, and today we're gonna to be going over adding colleges to the FAFSA form, ranking them, and why you always choose living on campus when you guys are choosing the housing situation for the FAFSA form. Now you can see here, I've already opened up a FAFSA form, and I'm on the section here where you guys start choosing the colleges. Now I'm gonna show you guys here essentially how you add colleges to the FAFSA. Now on the FAFSA form, you're only able to add 10 schools at a time. So obviously a lot of parents ask, a lot of students ask, what happens if you have to add more colleges? Colleges, which I will address in today's video as well. First, let me just add a school on here to show you guys how simple it is. Now down here, as you can see, as I scroll down a little bit, you have essentially two options here. You can either select basically choosing to add the school's name in, or if you know the federal code, which you can get the federal code by going on Google, or you can also just get the federal code by just calling up the financial aid office and they'll give you the federal code, but you don't really need to do those things. The easiest way to go if you don't know the federal code is right here. First thing that's the most important is choosing the state. We're just going to choose Rutgers University or here in the state of New Jersey because it's our state school here. Just make it easy for everyone. Now what you're gonna notice is I can either choose city or school name. Either one is optional because either one's gonna help bring up the school. So you can even type in part of the name, doesn't have to be the entire name. Let me show you. I'll type in just R-U-T and I'll just click on search bar here. And what you'll see will pop up is gonna pop up a bunch of schools in New Jersey that start with R-U. And obviously it's the only one. R-U-T is Rutgers. So you don't actually need the entire school's name and you don't need the school's federal code to be able to start adding schools to your FAFSA form. So here we're gonna add the school in by just clicking the button here and then just clicking on continue. And then what you're gonna notice is it's gonna ask me, the next question is gonna ask me right here specifically for Rutgers is, what is your housing plan? Now on the housing plan, if I click on here, you're gonna see, you can either choose on campus, with parents, or off campus. And a lot of people ask me, well, if I'm commuting, why would I choose on campus? because the reason I tell everyone just choose on campus just to kind of be safe. First reason you choose on campus, no matter if you're gonna be commuting or not, especially if you don't know you're gonna be commuting, is because when the schools get the FAFSA form, it goes to a giant computer, typically either an IT team set up by the college itself, or a consulting company basically hired by the college. Evaluate your FAFSA information, provide your financial assistance, i.e. your award letter. Now the reason you wanna put on campus is because on campus provides the biggest budget, the most cost for you guys. So that obviously has more space for more financial aid eligibility because if the school costs more, obviously when you add the housing and, and food costs than it does if you're commuting, then the machine sees that you have a bigger budget available for financial assistance. So it looks to give you more financial aid in many cases. Now obviously some parents are thinking, well, Ed, if I go on campus here and my students commutes, won't they just take away the aid? And the answer is yes, to a certain extent. What I've seen over 24 years of doing this is if you choose on campus and then later on you elect to go commuting, what typically happens is they reduce the aid, but they don't typically reduce it as much as they would have reduced it down if you chose commuting from the get-go. So in a weird way, you kind of are trying to get that little bit of a cushion if you chose living on campus and then all of a sudden you change your mind and went commuting because when you do that, a human being steps in and they change the aid. But in a lot of cases, they change the aid and they still give you a little bit more than you would have gotten if you chose commuting from the get-go. So we're going to choose on campus to begin with. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a couple more colleges to essentially show you guys here, and I'm going to speed it up a little bit here, and show you guys essentially what happens when you have the schools in ranking order and how you should be looking at them from a ranking order perspective. As you can see here, now on the left-hand side, I get to choose which school goes first, second, third, etc. Now there is a little bit of a trick to this because parents always ask, does it matter where the ranking of the school goes? And the answer is yes but it doesn't work the way most people think it works as far as the ranking. Now, the way it works is this. In the past, the schools could see your ranking as far as where you put them on the FAFSA form. Then what happened is the schools were barred from seeing it and then, unfortunately, just recently it's been uh, come to my attention, the schools can once again, unfortunately, see your ranking. So the reality is you do not want to put your reach dream school where you want to go scenario in the top three spots. So spot one, two, and three should either incorporate the schools, number one, where you think you're not going to get any financial aid. And if you're not sure if the school is going to be generous to you or not, very simple. I have in the description down below a video on the net price calculators. Watch that video. It'll explain to you how to figure out if your college is generous or not. Or the second way you can go is you plug in at the top your safety schools, the schools you're destined to get into, you're definitely going to get into. And the reason you go with kind of a backwards approach to the ranking list is because you don't want your dream school where you want to go to be number one, two, or three, because you don't want them thinking that they already have you kind of locked in like you want to go there. You want to put them down further. So let's just say that Rutgers up here at the top is my dream school where I want to go to. I would have liked to bring Rutgers all the way down to minimum the fourth, fifth, or sixth spot. The fourth, fifth, or sixth spot should be used for you for ranking purposes for your top three colleges, because that shows them that you're interested in the school 
but you're not heavily interested in that school. You're not destined, definitely want to go their scenario if you let me in. So this can help you in some cases get additional financial aid because they will put it in the algorithm as far as, far as it's concerned when they're creating the award letters that you guys receive after you guys get accepted. They will put in there if our student has our school ranked lower than the top three in some cases to provide you a little bit more grant money. So it is a way of kind of gaming the system essentially. And that being said, let's say we have the 10 schools on here so far and if we don't have any more space for any additional schools, what do we do? Because right now, as we get to the 10th school, as you see here, it's not letting me add any more colleges in the FAFSA because once again, the FAFSA only lets you have 10 spots on the FAFSA form. So it's very simple. What you need to do is you need to, when you're first filling out the FAFSA form, choose the top 10 schools you want to go to. The ranking of the top 10 you first put into the FAFSA are the top 10 schools your student wants to go to. And then what you do is you send the FAFSA off, you give the FAFSA about three weeks then after the three weeks have basically passed after you sent this in the first time, then what you want to do is go back into the FAFSA, look at your ranking, and call each one of these schools from one all the way down, call their financial aid offices. Very simple. You can just Google the financial aid office, Rutgers financial aid office phone number. So basically you call their financial aid office and you ask them, have you received our FAFSA, our student FAFSA? Or you can just have the student call and ask, have you received my FAFSA? They're going to ask you for your social security number, by the way, over the phone or your student ID if you've already been accepted. Give them either one of those and they'll tell you whether or not they pulled in the FAFSA. So what you're looking to see is if they pulled in the FAFSA. If they pulled it into their school, and the reason they're able to pull it in is because you have them here on the list indicating that this school can pull in my FAFSA as a student. Once they say, yes, we pulled in your FAFSA, then you can take them off the list. So it basically means after you go through, let's say, you have five schools remaining you have to add. After you know the five schools you made phone calls to have all said, yes, we pulled in your FAFSA, then you can go back into the FAFSA form and basically from all the way from first to 10, start taking the schools off. You can just click right here on the remove buttons and it'll take the school right off. And then what you can do is once you've removed the school, what you'll see is I can go all the way down the bottom now and I can then add another school in. And that's what you want to do. You click add another school and then basically go through the same process I showed you before, clicking on the state, choosing the school's name or the federal code and then add the school in. So that's how you handle both adding schools to the FAFSA, ranking them, as well as why you always indicate on the FAFSA form you're living on campus to try to get that extra bit of aid just in case you do decide to commute, as well as what you guys do out there if you have 10 schools or more to add to the FAFSA form. Now, if you guys have any comments, any questions, please leave them down below. Once again, I do answer all your comments and questions, as well as, once again, guys, we have the scholarship initiative also in the description for senior families this year. We're trying to give away $15,000 through the James Russo Memorial Scholarship. So if you want to be eligible for the James Russo Memorial Scholarship, that we're trying to give as much money as possible this year based on the views, the likes, and the comments you guys leave here on the, on the YouTube channel, please watch in the description. I have the James Russo Memorial Scholarship. On the screen now is our contact information. If you have questions, if you have concerns, if you need help with the financial aid process, or if you need help with the admissions process, we help out with all of it. Just shoot us over an email. It's the easiest way to reach us. If you'd like as well, you can call us, but it's difficult to reach us during October, November months, mainly because we're helping out families with the financial aid forms. But the easiest way, once again, to reach us if you're watching the video is to email us. Other than that, thank you guys for watching today's video. Once again, my name is Ed Zamora from Principia Prep.